Good morning and happy Sabbath. It is my pleasure to welcome you to our Sabbath worship today and more specifically to our study of the lesson. Before we begin our study, I'll ask our elder to offer an opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Sabbath rest and we thank you for the opportunity that we have to learn the words through lesson discussion. May your presence be with us as you enlighten us throughout this program until the end of it, for this humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. With me in the panel today to discuss the lesson, we have Elder Eli Udoyo. We have Sister Beatrice Kako. Happy Sabbath. We have our sign language interpreter, Brother Julia Sotieno. And I am Daniel Omar. Welcome. Our sister and brother. Today we are looking at the Bible and prophecy. There are many who view prophecy as something obscure. But today I hope that after our study, a good number of our viewers and listeners will develop interest in prophecy and study it for their spiritual well-being. Our key text says, And he said unto me, And to two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Of course, that is Daniel, after agonizing over the fate of his people in Babylon during the captivity, and asking God when the captivity would end, and an angel of the Lord comes and, and speaks to him. But still there were many other things that Daniel did not understand. Today, as the Seventh-day Adventist Church, what approach do we use to make it easy for our members to understand prophecy? There are those who view prophecy as something that happened in the past and so not very relevant to us. Or something that is yet to come and so we don't need to concern ourselves so much with it. Yet there are those who literally take what is said in prophecy to be the way it is. What is the best approach, Elder Eliud? If your prophecy uh, is basically a revelation or a proclamation of what is to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we advocate for biblical prophecy mm -hmm. because we have various aspects of prophecy. And biblical prophecy is actually a, progress a progressive and continuous fulfillment of history starting in the past and ending with God's eternal kingdom. Amen. Uh, Daniel, in his inquiry from God, mm -hmm. he was given uh, the way things will happen from the time that he was mm -hmm. until the second advent of Jesus Christ. Amen. And some of those things history has confirmed that they have been fulfilled the way they were prophesied. Mm -hmm. That is why as Adventists we believe in taking the approach of historists. Yes. Where what was proclaimed is fulfilled progressively mm -hmm. and continuously. Mm -hmm. And it will go on until the second advent of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sister, anything to add on that? I just want to add that um, in prophecy, we yes. are able to confirm yes. the accuracy of God's word. Mm -hmm. Actually, Jesus himself says in the book of John 14, 29, yes. and now I have told you before it comes, yes. that when it does come to pass, mm -hmm. you may believe. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Elder, you referred to the historicist approach to prophecy. 
but in a little bit more detail, what, what is it all about? The historicist approach to understanding prophecy. There are different ways of interpreting mm -hmm. or understanding prophecy. Yes. Uh, we have the preticisms, mm -hmm. which advocates for whatever was proclaimed yes. in the Bible mm -hmm. had happened sometimes in the past mm -hmm. and not there at our present time. Yes. And then there is that approach of futurism, mm -hmm. uh, which proclaims that uh, whatever was proclaimed like Daniel was given mm -hmm. is to happen far in the distant future. Mm -hmm. But we are advocating for whatever was proclaimed by Daniel mm -hmm. started happening from that time. Yes. And history has confirmed that bits of what was said has been fulfilled. Like in uh, uh, Daniel chapter 2, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar yes. is given a dream. Mm -hmm. And in that dream, he sees a statue yes. with the head of gold, mm -hmm. and the hands and breast of silver, mm -hmm. and then bronze, the thighs, yes. then iron, yes. the toes, iron mixed with the clay. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did not understand. Yes. So God revealed to Daniel that this was prophetic. Mm -hmm. It was given and, and it was to show how kingdoms will come into being yes. from the time that King Nebuchadnezzar was there. Right. And history has confirmed mm -hmm. that there was Babylon. Yes. Later on, followed by Medo Persia. Mm -hmm. Later on, followed by Greece. Mm -hmm. Later on, Rome. Yes. Until now, we go up to the end of uh, the time that Jesus will come the second time. Mm -hmm. Nothing has gone amiss. He has confirmed that the way they were proclaimed, mm -hmm. it has been fulfilled that way. Mm -hmm. That is how we should understand prophecy. Right. Progressive and continuous fulfillment of that that has been proclaimed mm -hmm. in the Bible. Right, thank you for, for that uh, elaborate explanation. Uh, Sister Beatrice, you, you read uh, Daniel 7. Uh, you read Daniel 2, you, you see the, the image and uh, the head of gold, uh, the, the silver, the bronze, and until you write. But when you read Daniel chapter 7, we, we don't see these images of gold, silver. Instead, we see beasts. The same applies to Daniel 8. Does it mean that God is speaking of a different thing to Daniel? Or how do you marry what we have in Daniel 2, Daniel 7, Daniel 8, with regard to the historicist approach to interpretation of biblical prophecy? Thank you, Elder. Now, if you look at Daniel 2, mm -hmm. it still talks about the kingdoms. Yes. The first kingdom that came into existence, that mm -hmm. is Babylon followed by the kingdom of medo yes. then we had the kingdom of Greece, and yes. finally the kingdom of Rome. Mm -hmm. Now if you move to Daniel 7, yes. we have the four beasts mm -hmm. still having the kingdoms from Babylon up to Rome. Yes. Now, and finally, at the end of it, there is the little horn, and this little horn you know, become very powerful mm -hmm. and it represents another power that comes to persecute even God's people. Mm -hmm. But we are seeing another great stone that comes and crushes it and a and kingdom that is that of God is established, a kingdom that lives forever and ever. Mm -hmm. So it does not give any different meaning. It is the same, except God uses different symbols. Right. But it talks of what happens progressively and continuously. Thank you. And I, I think you have something from okay. the way you look at it. In uh, <laughs> Daniel chapter 2, yes. this prophecy mm -hmm. is given to a hidden king. Yes. And uh, uh, God 
purpose to use the statue. Yes. And the emphasis here is to, to demonstrate the political kingdoms that would come from that time until second advent of Jesus Christ. Yes. When you read the book of Daniel chapter 7 mm -hmm. and chapter 8, uh, now the symbolism used here are animals, mm -hmm. the beasts and the rest. Yeah. But the emphasis here is to give the spiritual kingdoms mm -hmm. that will, or the impact of these spiritual kingdoms yes. from the time of Babylon mm -hmm. until the second advent of Jesus Christ. Yes. So the emphasis is different and what God wants to to convey mm -hmm. uh, is also different because in chapter 7 and chapter 8 mm -hmm. the prophecy is given to Daniel yes a man of God mm -hmm. but in chapter 2 it's given to a hidden God mm -hmm. though a hidden man yes though the interpretation is done mm -hmm. by the man of God right so that brings a difference thank you <clears throat> going back to our key text and he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Was this a literal number of days, or was it a symbolic number of days? As we have indicated that there is the literal understanding and the symbolic understanding. How do we recall the days here? Sister. Thank you, Elder. Now, as we have looked at Daniel 2, Daniel 8, and uh, actually Daniel 7, yes. we see the use of symbols. Mm -hmm. And therefore, even the numbers that are indicated therein mm -hmm. are symbolic. Yes. They are not literal. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if we look at um, how to interpret prophecies, mm -hmm. then there are three key things that we need to look at. Mm -hmm. One, we look at the context in which the prophecy is foretold. Yes. Then two, we look at, are there symbols that are used? Yes. And then three, we look at the time period. Yes. How long was it supposed to take? Mm -hmm. If that is the case then, we should not therefore interpret the numbers literally, yes. but we interpret them you know, symbolically, just yes. like the prophecy is mm -hmm. told. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Elda, some addition? When prophecy is used with the same words, yes. like it is used in the book of Daniel mm -hmm. and Revelation. And then the, the, the language there is also vague. It is important to note that even the numberings, mm -hmm. the numberings are not given there in an open way. Mm -hmm. So for us to interpret it correctly, mm -hmm. we must understand the, the, the meaning of the wordings of the numbers there. Mm -hmm. We will take our attention to the book of Ezekiel, mm -hmm. chapter 4, verse 6. Right. Also the book of Numbers, chapter 14, verse 34, mm -hmm. where an interpretation is given. Yes. When numberings of times are used symbolically, mm -hmm. then one day refers to one year. Mm -hmm. So like when we talk about 1260 uh, days, that will be 1260, or if 1260 we turn them into years yes. because they are symbolically represented there. Mm -hmm. That is how we will find it coming out. Mm -hmm. Again, if you look at that number and you take it literally, mm -hmm. history has confirmed that if you take it literally, yes. then the timings of this kingdom will not match mm -hmm. as they were given. Yes. But if you take them prophetically mm -hmm. as uh, a day or a year principle, mm -hmm. then these kingdoms have come to pass as the timings are given mm -hmm. in those numbers. Mm -hmm. So when God tells uh, Ezekiel, you lie on your side 40 days for the iniquity of the sins of the children of Judah, Using the year-day principle, was the prophet to lie on his side for 40 years? Well, thank you, Elder. Uh, in this case, the prophet is supposed to bear the pain yes. that um, the, the, the Israelites caused God mm -hmm. when they were you know, going against the will of God. Mm -hmm. And this is to foretold 
the pain that Jesus would undergo when we continue sinning against uh, him. Mm -hmm. Probably you didn't get me clearly. Elder, what I'm asking is, using the year day principle, when, the, when, when God tells Ezekiel, you lie on his side for 40 days, right? A day for a year. Did the prophet have to, to do this for 40 years using the year day principle? Or how do you understand it? No, that was symbolic. All right. If he did it for 40 days, mm -hmm. it was symbolizing that they were to take 40 years. All right. If you read it precisely, it says for 40 years, mm -hmm. one year for each of the 40 days, you, you explored the land. Mm -hmm. You will suffer for the sins and know that it is how, how bitter it is mm -hmm. to have God against you. Yes. So, it was 40 days, but symbolizing 40 years. Mm -hmm. That was a prophetic number. Right. One would argue that uh, the time period uh, depicted for these kingdoms does not match with, uh, with, uh, with what actually took place. Because these kingdoms did not last days, but they lasted years. But the Bible talks of days. Wouldn't that be a point for us to say that I, I don't think one would give a lot of attention to this prophecy or, or it, it is simply some kind of imagination and something that is not more or less realistic. That is why we say it. Mm -hmm. If it's a prophetic message, yes. like it's given the book of Daniel, mm -hmm and the book of Revelation. Yes. The numbering is there, mm -hmm. also are symbolic. Correct. For us to understand it properly, mm -hmm. we must use the day-year principle mm -hmm. for us to match. And when you use that, history has confirmed mm -hmm. that the timings of these kingdoms mm -hmm. has matched the timings that are given there. Yes. Sister, in the book of Daniel, again, we have expressions of time like the evenings and mornings. For a time, two times, and the dividing of the time. The week and the middle of the week. As you read Daniel 7 and, and, and Daniel 8. What, what is the significance of all this with regard to the year day principle? Thank you, Elder. Now, these are kind of use of peculiar, you know, words. That when such peculiar words are used, mm -hmm. then we need not to take them literally. Yes. When somebody says you come and visit me for 13 evenings and 13 nights, mm -hmm. it becomes very difficult to take it literally. Yes. And therefore, they are symbolic. Mm -hmm. And that is why, if we were to look at, you know, days when it comes to prophecy, yes. then we don't have to take them literally. Mm -hmm. They are symbolic. Right. Now, coming to Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Let me just read. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and look. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and half a time. In the context of the historicist up to interpretation of prophecy, which power is this? Uh, going by what was revealed mm -hmm. in the prophecy given in Daniel chapter 2, yes. uh, the first kingdom that was to come was Babylon. Mm -hmm. In Daniel chapter 7, yes. uh, he's talking about seeing the lion mm -hmm. representing the Babylon, yes. then devoured by the bear, mm -hmm. which is equivalent to Medo-Persia that we 
read in Daniel chapter 2. Yes. Then we see, Daniel saw the fourth beast, yes. which was very terrifying mm -hmm. and scared. That represents the pagan rule. Mm -hmm. But out of this terrifying beast, he's talking about a horn, the little horn. Yes. The little horn, mm -hmm. which is, uh, uh, is talk, you are trying to describe the characteristics of the little horn. Yes. For us to be able to identify it. Mm -hmm. And uh, a number of things you have mentioned that uh, the pagan Rome, mm -hmm. after the Greece, yes. then we ended up having this, uh, what, what in chapter 8 they're calling the pagan Rome. Mm -hmm. Out of this, there were several. Yes. It, it had ten horns, mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. which symbolizes the kingdoms that came out of that. That is the England, the Switzerland, mm -hmm. Germany, mm -hmm. and all that. Yes. Out of it came the little horn. Yes, sorry for interruption, Elder. So, in, in other words, in, in terms of Daniel 2, the, the, the level or the stage in history we have reached is the feet where we have iron yes. mixed with yes. clay and that uh, the divided kingdoms of of Europe then and uh, that's what you are linking to the ten horns yes right right proceed so out of the ten horns mm -hmm. came the little horn mm -hmm. that is now from Rome yes the headquarters came the power that was the papa, the pope, mm -hmm. uh, that came out mm -hmm. to be more powerful, to rule all over these, the ten nations. Mm -hmm. And any that tried to, to, to interfere with his rule, mm -hmm. he would clear. Yes. Like if you read that book of Daniel, you find that the three of the horns were subdued. Mm -hmm. And history has confirmed that out of the ten European nations then, yes. three of them were destroyed mm -hmm. by the, the Pope, yes. the papal system. Yes. And these are in history as the Heruli, mm -hmm. uh, the Vandals, mm -hmm. and the Ostrogoths. Yes. So this confirms to us who the little horn is. Mm -hmm. And during those days, the persecuting power, yes. the saints, anybody that was coming up with a new teaching from mm -hmm. what they wanted them, the people to know, yes. would be persecuted. Mm -hmm. That is what characterizes who this little horn is. Yes. Sister, you have something to add there? I just want to add that um, in the that, uh, book of Daniel, that is chapter 7 and chapter 8, yes. there are activities of this little horn. Mm -hmm. If we compare these activities with what history has, yes. we are seeing that uh, it is actually the purple horn. Mm -hmm. And some of the activities that they do, they have tried to change times and the law. Mm -hmm. And like, they are changing the real day of worship yes. from the seventh day to the first day of the week. Mm -hmm. And then there are books that they use to teach their believers. Mm -hmm. And in their books, the second commandment is deleted. Mm -hmm. And that commandment says, thou shall not worship any idol. So yes. they, they delete it. And so, because they, they embrace the use of those idols. Mm -hmm. And so, from these characteristics alone, we are able to tell mm -hmm. that really, this is actually the purple Rome. Okay. And another characteristic, you know, they blaspheme God. Mm -hmm. uh, blaspheme, you are usurping an authority that is only meant for God. You know, like it is said, the Pope is able to forgive sin. Mm -hmm. The only one who forgives sin is God and God mm -hmm. alone. Mm -hmm. Now, from these activities, we are able to really identify mm -hmm. who this little on is. Okay, thank you. Elder, um, from the, the prophecies of Daniel 8 and, and Daniel uh, 7, the rule of this little horn, does it extend indefinitely or there is an end to it? And what happens after that? I think that question concern, uh, it disturbs Daniel. Mm -hmm. Because when uh, 
he was given the characteristics of the little horn. Yes. And then you saw how he was persecuting the saints mm -hmm. and how these poor are suffering. Yes. So then he asked, For how long mm -hmm. will this take place? Yes. And he was given an answer mm -hmm. that will take 12, 60 years. Yes. So when you uh, use the year day principle mm -hmm. and uh, try to calculate the 12, 60 mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. When it ended, uh, you will find that uh, that begins from the, the papal rule, mm -hmm. uh, 538 AD, mm -hmm. until the time when uh, Pope was captured, mm -hmm. that is in 1798. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the time is given there much. Mm -hmm. And help us to confirm who this person was. Right. So we know why the Bible is referring to him like that. So you say that uh, the medieval papacy, its supremacy lasted around 1,260 years. That is what the Bible told mm -hmm. Daniel. Yes. And the history has since confirmed that. All right. And even the timings where it started and where it ended mm -hmm. matches the time when the, the, the Pope was toppled, captured. Right. Yes. Sister Beatrice, back to our key text. And to 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. With regard to the flow in the events and the fulfillment of prophecy, did this come to pass in the days of Daniel? Or did it end with uh, the end of uh, the medieval papacy? Or is it something yet to be accomplished? And what is it about the cleansing of the sanctuary? Thank you, Elder. Now, at the end, when the papal was now, the Pope was taken into captivity. Sorry, which year was that? Just a reminder. The year. The year uh, when, the, when the, the Pope was, was, was arrested by General Bethia. 1798. 1798, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at that time, the uh, Pope was taken into captivity, yes. and therefore he was kind of bruised. His its own was bruised. Mm -hmm. And therefore the reformers came, and so they started you know, studying the Word of God. Yes. And from here, they studied the word of God, and so they saw that time was nearing, mm -hmm. that the end was almost coming. Mm -hmm. And so people decided to, you know, they thought that the end would come. So when they counted those days, yes. they realized that uh, in uh, around 1844, mm -hmm. then they were expecting Jesus Christ to come. That right. is to cleanse the earthly sanctuary. sanctuary. Mm -hmm. But this was not the case. Right. They were disappointed. Mm -hmm. And this is when they now took keen, you know, some of them regrouped, and then they took keen study yes. of these 2,300 years. Mm -hmm. And they realized that it is at this time that Jesus Christ moved into the most holy place, yes. where then the investigative judgment began. And uh, the Bible records that this judgment would take place up to the end of time. That is when Jesus Christ shall come to collect his people. Right. So, so uh, would I be right to conclude that from 18, uh, uh, 1798 to 1844, that period ended the 2,300 days of years. Would I be accurate to conclude that? Yes, you'd be accurate. Actually, in that year, in 1260 years is is talked about in chapter seven. Yes. And the, the concern there as was the concern of Daniel was when the persecuting power will end. Yes. That is why it ended in 1798. Uh, yes. But then in chapter eight mm -hmm. of Daniel mm -hmm. The concern here is the, the, the cleansing of the sanctuary. Right. So our details are given on when this will, will start. Yes. That is when that year of 2,300 years are given. Mm -hmm. So that is why the difference of these numbers. But 
1260 years and 2300 years are within the time span. Mm -hmm. But it gives a different events start taking place at different times. So, so when does the countdown for the 2300 years begin? From the going forth of the commandment to establish, re-establish Jerusalem. Yes. When was that? Which year? It is four. Did it? Four hundred and fifty-seven BC. Four fifty-seven. That yes. is when the command was given. Yes. So from the countdown up to eighteen forty-four, the two thousand three hundred years yes, were finished. Yes. But which which sanctuary was cleansed? That is my main concern. Which sanctuary was cleansed? Before that, many sanctuaries, they, they had their habit of uh, cleansing the earthly sanctuary. Mm -hmm. the, this was called the, aton the, day, of, the day of atonement. Yes, yes, yes. This was being done on earth. Mm -hmm. Which was an archetype of, of, of this one that is in heaven. The heavenly. So all that was happening mm -hmm. in this earthly sanctuary mm -hmm. was typifying mm -hmm. what would finally happen in the heavenly sanctuary. Yes. So the 2030 years, that is the beginning of 1844, mm -hmm. that is now the beginning of the cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary. Right. The investigative judgment, you mentioned something about that. What is it about the investigative judgment? What is being investigated? Um, if we look at the book of Daniel 7, mm -hmm. then we are seeing uh, Daniel having a vision of the ancient of days mm -hmm. that is uh, seated and the books are being opened. Yes. Then in the process, we are seeing a man like the son of God, mm -hmm. you know, son of man coming in and he's brought and is given the eternal uh, kingdom that will last forever and mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. At this time, the man that is the son of uh, man, that is God, uh, Jesus himself, mm -hmm. is interceding for the people. Yes. And here, the judge is God himself, mm -hmm. and the advocate is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, the devil is the accuser. So as he accuses, you know, Jesus is there interceding for us. Yes. And this is taking place right in heaven. And it is a process that is going on even as we are living now towards the end of the time. It ends when all this is done and Jesus will come with its reward to us. And would I be accurate to conclude just before we move to the next stage because our time is also uh, almost gone. Would I be accurate to conclude that we are typically living in the day of atonement? You will be very right mm -hmm. because the timings that were given to Daniel, yes. we are told that this investigative judgment mm -hmm. Or as it's referred to Daniel chapter eight, yes. uh, the cleansing of the sanctuary mm -hmm. began in 1844. Yes. From that time, mm -hmm. what Daniel saw yes. is the second advent of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and we are living at that particular time. Right. So the next timing that is given in the Bible mm -hmm. is the second advent of Jesus Christ, the establishment of God's eternal kingdom. Good. Thank you very much. Typology as prophecy. We referred to the antitypical sacrificial system in the earthly uh, sanctuary, which pointed to the sanctuary above. But what, what guidelines do, you, do we use, sister, to, to decide that this is a type and this is not a type? Well, thank you. We look at uh, the event and then we look at... Uh, the time that it takes place, mm -hmm. and then we look at it, does it have any meaning in future? Yes. And so, if we look at some of the texts that are given, yes. we look at the first uh, book of First Corinthians 10, 1 to 12, mm -hmm. it's talking about Israel. Yes. In this case, Israel is an uh, anti-type, mm -hmm. and the type is us who are spiritual Israelites, yes. living today, mm -hmm. that God was with the people of Israel when he delivered them from the land of Egypt. Yes. And uh, he moved on with them. He was there with them in their challenges. But we are seeing most of them, you know, are going against the will of God. It is just like what is uh, happening to us today. Mm -hmm. That God is always there with us. He has given us life. But what do we do? Occasionally we drift away from God. Mm -hmm. So that is Israel then 
was an anti-type. And therefore, type, the, the type today is us, the spiritual is not yes, yes. Thank you very much. Elder, I, I, do we have in the Bible any other, uh, any other examples that uh, were anti-types of what we have today? Typology points to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And why it is used all over in Matthew chapter 12, verse 40, mm -hmm. John 19, verse 36. Mm -hmm. In uh, Matthew, uh, Jesus pointed out as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of fish, yes. the Son of Man was or also will be three nights, three days on the earth, pointing at his death and resurrection. Amen. So all this about typology points to Jesus. Amen. Whatever is prophecy simply mm -hmm. points to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It points to how we can get salvation. Amen. That is all typology as prophecy. Amen. Thank you very much. Elder, um, yes, before we move on, mm -hmm. another real antitype that we see yes. was the serpent. Mm -hmm. Uh, when Moses lifted up that serpent, the bronze serpent, yeah, yeah, yeah the bronze serpent, the, yeah, and yeah. then you know any Israelites who had been bit by the snakes, mm -hmm. when they looked up to it, they were healed, mm -hmm. and so it was pointing to Jesus being lifted on the cross. Yes. So even as we live today, we are supposed to look unto Jesus. Yes, thank you, thank you. Um, we'll have to <coughs> conclude our discussion today, and uh, Elder, I'll give you a chance to say something to our viewers as we close we are included in prophecy mm -hmm. and some of the aspects of the prophecy that were given to daniel are being fulfilled today so we are not outside and it's important for us to know that we are living at the end times the next time scale that is given is the second advent of jesus christ so i call upon each and every one of us, let us look unto Jesus. That is the only way we'll get salvation. Amen. Sister Beatrice. Uh, from the book of Second Timothy, that is uh, chapter 4, verse 7, we are seeing Paul summarizing his mission. And he says that, uh, I have fought the fight. I have kept the faith. And so we look at the Israelites. You know, God loved them so much. And they were given the promised land. And they walked with God and they reached very close to, you know, the promised land. But only a few of them reached. The question is, you are today walking with God. Are you keeping the faith so that at end of the time, you will find yourself in the promised land? That is eternal kingdom. Let us look up to Jesus so that we reach the promised land. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jesus says, I have told you these things beforehand so that when they take place, when they happen, you may believe. God has revealed to us that which is to come. And when they get fulfilled, let us have our faith rooted in Christ because his coming is near. Sister Beatrice, pray as we close. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful discussion that you've given us. We are sinful human beings. It becomes very difficult to understand your word prophecy. Father, may you give us the Holy Spirit to guide us and always to root us just on you and you alone. Build our faith, Father, so that when you come with your second kingdom that will ever last forever and ever, we will find ourselves in there. Thank you, Lord, for this is my humble prayer, trusting and believing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, dear viewer, for being patient and learning with us during this session. Just like the Bereans, when you go home, take your Bible and examine to get more of the truth, especially with regard to prophecy. I invite you to the other programs that we have this Sabbath, that God will richly bless you. Welcome.